Hey everyone, want to be a social justice advocate? That's what we're discussing today at JD Careers Out There, where we get you career advice from fellow lawyers and non-practicing lawyers to help you enjoy success and happiness in your career. In law school, you learn how to think, read, and write like a lawyer. We're here to help you enjoy your career, and a big part of that is finding a path that excites you, so we're going to look at one of those paths today. I'm Mark Luber, and today we're talking to social justice advocate Abby Liebman of Los Angeles. Abby is a co-founder of the California Women's Law Center, which since 1980 has been advocating on behalf of women and girls fighting to protect and advance their civil rights. So whether it's sexual assault, domestic violence, child care, family daycare, discrimination in sports, the Women's Law Center has bravely fought to change law and policy in those areas. So things that are commonplace today, like sexual harassment training in the workplace, that stuff didn't always exist. Someone had a fight to make that happen, and that is Abby's world. Today, she's the president and CEO of Mazon, a Jewish response to hunger, and they're a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to preventing and alleviating hunger among people of all faiths and backgrounds. So I asked Abby to tell us about the founding of the California Women's Law Center and how having a law degree helps being a social justice advocate. Here's a look at how that went. So you were then really, you were serving as a very groundbreaking force in the women's rights movement. Well, we thought so, um, although we didn't think so. I, I think one of the things that's really important is that, you know, if we'd stopped and said, you know, wow, we're creating the, the California Women's Law Center and, and we're going to be providing these unbelievable methodologies for change for millions of women and girls, we were freaked out. <laughs> you know, it's just, you just say, okay, so today we're going to have a meeting and pull together the board. And then we're going to write the mission statement. And then, and this is what we want to do. And this is where we're going to raise the money to do it. And, and you get involved in the day-to-day -day one foot in front of the other. And you don't stop to think about what that might really mean. Yeah, because the big picture can be too overwhelming. It's too much. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you'd also begin to, I think, engage in a lot of self-doubt where you say, who am I to be doing this? So all these other people. Who get it. And then you realize that there may be other people who have the idea but they don't have the will to put it into action. Yes. There may be people who have the will to put things into action, but they don't have the idea, or they don't have the means to do it. Or, you know, so you really need this great synergy. And frankly, the fact that Jennifer McKenna and Sheila Kuehl were willing to work with me on this is the only reason this stuff happened. Um, because you had these really these three women who any one of whom it would have been amazing to get to get involved with this and all three of us are doing it together so it's you know there's a lot of real creative energy and and frankly connections and that power of of personality that really made a difference yeah the synergy of everybody coming together yes. so what would you say for for young lawyers or law students who are watching who want to also make a difference and they want to go out there and uh, advocate on, on whatever issue it is that they believe in and make policy change. Um, what would your advice be and, and how did you go about using your law degree in this process? You know, how did those legal skills fit in? Because people without law degrees can do advocacy work, that can do nonprofit work. So how did your law degree fit into that? And then how do we tell other people that they can go out and use their law degree that way? Okay, so I think, let's start with the what did my law degree do for me thing and move it to the, right. so my law degree really did several things for me. It was an immense credibility tool. So people, people have a lot of respect for attorneys. Um, they have some fear, never a bad thing, I think, when you're trying to do advocacy work and make change. And they also have learned a certain way of reasoning that I think after law school you begin to take for granted. So it's all that inductive and deductive reasoning, the idea of logic. There's a way of writing, being persuasive, being able to negotiate, the idea that compromise isn't a dirty word, that you don't necessarily get everything you want, nor do you give up after you get the first no. You know, it's just like, which is really important in fundraising, let me tell you, that, you know, knowing that the first no means you're halfway to the next, yes, it's just, you got to not let anybody slam the door. And I think that, you know, as lawyers, you're taught a skill set that allows you to appreciate that you don't need to have it all in order to have a win. So it's learning how to create a, a sense of accomplishment, even in the face of some defeat. Um, but believe me, I mean, working on women's rights in the 1980s was not an easy thing to do. We lost all 
the time. It's interesting stuff, right? Abby shares all kinds of inspirational stories and advice in the full interview at jdcareersoutthere.com. She tells us lots more about what it takes to be a successful social justice advocate, uh, how to keep an open mind so that you can embrace new opportunities, and more about how your JD helps along the way, amongst many other things. Uh, you can take a shortcut to the site by going to jdcot.com, and if you're already there, you can just scroll down to the full video. Make sure you become a member so you get access to the full interview and access to lots more exclusive content filled with great advice. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'm Mark Luber, and look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.